want to be forever young. Do you really want to live forever? Forever. And ever. Today's October 6, 2019. I'm Brent Nally, and I'm here with the founder and CEO of Chimera Labs, Dr. Duncan Ross. We are here at the very end of RadFest 2019 in the Westgate Casino and Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada. RadFest stands for the Revolution Against Aging and Death. Dr. Ross, thanks so much for being here. Thanks for that, because I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, that's what RadFest stands for. It's How's it been here the last few days for you? It's been pretty cool. It's uh, my first time here, um, but I was pleasantly surprised by the talks that I heard. Um, really present. That, that's very good to hear because personally I've been in this so longevity much. movement for about 15 years and I'm 34 so I'm considered a crazy person by most people but I think these people are being considered a little bit less and less crazy and did you have a chance to see Dr. Um, I never mind I don't want to go down that route I want to focus on Chimera so um, you gave an incredible speech I've personally tried to watch every video I could find of you on YouTube and some of your other colleagues as well too, Doug Spiel. Um, and then a person who's become pretty good friends with me, Dr. Ed Park, who's running an anti-aging practice in Orange County, has been purchasing the exosomes from Chimera Labs and I've been following his practice and it's been pretty incredible, the results that he's gotten. And these are anecdotal, right? But they are incredible anecdotal results. So. I'm going to stop talking here in a moment and I'm going to let you share the big news that you shared with the rest of the crowd here. Well, to what you were saying, it was like, you, you got to start somewhere. I mean, really, my goal is to produce a reproducible product. That's it. Um, I don't know where it's going to go or who's going to use it for what, but I want to know what it is. Um, and we're getting better and better at that. And we invest basically everything we make into figuring that out. Um, what you're alluding to is that over the past couple of years I've talked about exosomes. I have this many exosomes. But you know, the world's definition of exosome is not set, okay? We don't know what an exosome is. We know it's a lipid vesicle. We know that some have some exosome surface, mar surface markers and some have other ones. We know that it's a heterogeneous mixture. It's really hard, right? So when you have a thing, a product, a, you know, an, a secretory outcome from a cell, you have to define it. And I've been trying with the best um, machines possible to do so and not getting really the resolution that I want. Can I, what are those machines? Can you share just the names of those? So you can do this by flow cytometry, which, you know, everybody is a, is a robust field, <clears throat> but you're really looking at multiple exosomes when you do that. Um, you can do it with something called a nanocyte, which is starting to become like an industry standard, but what a nanocyte really shows you is the number of particles. I mean, they could be pieces of sand, they could be dust. I mean, you don't know that it's an exosome. You know you have some very small thing there, um, and you want to believe it's an exosome, but you have no proof. Right? Um, so I, I was happily approached by this company from Oxford called ONI, telling me that I needed their microscope, and it took me a couple months to realize that I needed it. Um, they must have had a good sales team. They just kept hitting you. They high. Just, so, yeah, they ran great. after me at the conference. You know, that's there we go. You got the hustle. And when I actually saw what they were capable of, I, I just lost it. I couldn't it clicked, believe this right? was possible. Yeah. You know? And they have a, a scientist from the NIH who said, "I didn't believe it was possible to see the things that you've shown me are possible." You know? That's been kind of a common theme the last few days here at Radfest, right? You know, with yeah. people saying, "Man, we're kind of doing the impossible in certain ways." Well. It's, I guess that's what it's, science has always been. I mean, when, when DNA was discovered, you suddenly <laughs> knew this. I mean, if you're at the edge, you know, things change. And you want to be, a, you want to say things definitively, but you don't know because they change. And every time I learn something or get a new instrument, what I think changes. And that's what science really is. I think science is just happening a little bit faster now. And you know, science fiction one day could be science fact the next day, but we have to make sure that we're sticking with science fact when we're communicating such important things. So, so let's get to the real science fact of 2019 of Chimera exosomes, because nice that's thing, exciting enough. The nice thing about scientists, and that's why I love my father so much, is they don't lie, okay? They can't lie to themselves. 
um, almost to a fault. You know, if you don't believe what the experiment's telling you, you don't know what to do in the next experiment. So they're very nice guys. I love hanging out with scientists. Um, <clears throat> so, so now that I have this machine, I can now look at different questions and start to qualify what I think an exosome is. And because an exosome has so many parts to it, we're going to create what we're going to call RU, which is a Ross unit. Um, and that RU is going to comprise the number of particles, the types of uh, vesicle markers that are on there, the amounts of some growth factors, and then you end up with one number that makes you believe what that thing is. And then you can dose according to that, um, more or less. That's really exciting. And so, just to make sure I understand, and more importantly, the audience understands, before this new technology, you had strong theories and beliefs on what was there, but you were kind of almost literally shooting in the dark, shooting right? Shooting in the dark, right. And I go to every exosome conference in the world. The International Society of Extracellular Vesicles, they, they have conferences in Japan, but Barcelona, and we all talk about which types of surface markers matter, but nobody is sure, okay? I mean, it's a very new field. Um, so you, you have to pick one thing and then work against that. And I've desperately wanted something that I could sort of hang my hat on. And this microscope has given me something to hang my hat on. I love it. And one thing you said earlier about scientists and how you like to be around scientists because they can't tell the, because they have to tell the truth because they can't lie to themselves. There's a really smart venture capitalist I follow named Naval Ravikant in Silicon Valley. He's a very, very brilliant investor. And one thing he says is that every scam artist he's ever known lies to themselves first and foremost before they can scam others. So it's really important to be auditing your own thoughts and make sure you're telling your self the truth. That's, that's what I talk about on my YouTube channel. Just every day I now audit my own thoughts and make sure that I am saying what's truthful to me because then it's not going to go out to everybody else. So yeah. I'm, I'm glad that you brought that up and I'm glad you had that influence you know, from your father. It's clearly made you the man that you are, right? Yeah. <clears throat> so you talked a little bit about the, the big announcement that you made um, on stage. Are there any other details that you wanted to share on that before we get well, too straight? So in the next week, I'm going to create a lot more data in, in Oxford. Uh, and I want to share that at A4M in December in Las Vegas. Um, and this is really a big deal. I mean, everybody out there saying they have an exosome really doesn't know. They have a particle. The tap water has particles in it. You know? <laughs> And uh, I even have the, the good nanosite that has the laser so I can try to see the surface markers, but the, the brightness of it is so low that you can't really be sure. This is a new, it won the Nobel Prize in 2014. It's a new method of looking at light. It's a blinking fluorophore that doesn't quench, and you can collect more light than you could before. So it's the first time you can physically see the particle, not using electrons or atomic force microscopy. Or, um, and so for somebody like me, now I can do this on every batch. I can do this three times a week. Um, and, and we can really start to make real therapies. Okay, that's really exciting. Um, we're gonna do this a little bit backwards. If you have a few more minutes, I'd love for you to, just for the audience who might not understand anything about stem cells and exosomes, can you just give a real quick brief introduction to what are exosomes? So, um, and, and where are they found? Like, when did we learn about them? So just if you were a scientist, you would have heard that cells function through what's called a paracrine effect since you started, which means we thought that proteins were being set back and forth. It turns out that that's not really true. Uh, the blueprint for the protein is being sent back and forth. And now the blueprint would break down if it wasn't protected. So it's protected by a bilipid membrane um, called an exosome and the blueprint's on the inside. Now when the blueprint gets to where it needs to go, it starts expressing the proteins that it wanted to express. Okay. And then you get that effect where you want that effect. Okay. And Chimera Labs was founded in 2012. Have you? Imagine you put meat on a table, right? Right, right. It's red when you put it there, it's brown in a couple days. Yep, oxidation is what I always kind of thought right. was happening exactly. there, right? Um, that's how the body works. DNA is here for millions of years. Proteins are here for a very short time. Right. Messenger RNA are here to be in between. Uh, they last for a good amount of time. So the body uses messenger RNA and sends it around the body to get done what it needs done. Okay. Um, that's very incredible. 
Listen, Dr. Ross, I really appreciate you taking the time here. You're at your booth, there's people coming up. I wanna give you an opportunity to go back and serve your clients, but I really appreciate you, um, or serve your prospects, serve people who are interested in this uh, incredible company and incredible concept, but I really appreciate you taking the time to do this, and I'm really rooting for you guys. You're doing incredible work, so thank, thank you, you so very much. much. Yeah. One mind. One love. Say never sitting in a sand pit, life is a short trip. The music's for the sad men. Praising our leaders, we're getting in tune. The music's played by the the madman. <laughs>